What's up guys and welcome to a very special day. A day where I think we might be finally able to see the true performance of the Mobile One Ford Mustang. This car has fought us for two years with so many gremlins and so many people have tried to fix it. However, we did the best thing. We got onto our good friends at Link Engine Management in New Zealand and said, hey, you've got a lot of cool products, can you help us? And today, we thought it would be a good idea to show you guys what those products do and how technology can make quite an old car very competitive. Let's check it out. I'm here with Robbie Thornton in Track Day Performance. Robbie, I've been racking my brains for two years in this car. I love it, but it's causing me so many issues. There's been misfires, it doesn't fuel right sometimes, the throttle response is quite slow, and then add that to the fact that it's a big car and left-hand drive, it's just become a bit of a handful. So we got in touch with the guys from Link and they suggested a lot of parts that you've been fitting to the car. What are they and what do they do? I know there's gonna be a lot of computer wizardry going on inside, but on the outside, I presume there's a lot that needs to be feeding that information. Yeah, very true. So yeah, so it got one of the latest Link uh, ECUs, but that's no good if the sensor uh, suite on the car is no good. So uh, what we did was we assessed the sensors on the car and some of them were suited to the original OEM engine management only. So what we did was we asked Link uh, for the correct sensors. So we fitted a three and a four bar map sensor. One of them actually reads the boost pressure before the throttle body and the other one reads the boost pressure after the throttle body. While we don't run anywhere close to that, amount of boost it allows us to measure possible spikes which can happen uh, in transient conditions when the throttle especially when drifting when you're on and off the throttle really suddenly so you have this huge supercharger blowing a huge amount of boost into here and when the throttle's wide open the engine's eating the boost as fast as the supercharger can pump it but all of a sudden there's a dam which is the throttle body suddenly shuts so you get a massive boost spike so we just log that and uh, we deal with it there's a few little tweaks these you can do to the fueling so when you open the throttle again and there might be some of that spike left it deals with it in a more uh, let's say refined manner than the OEM system which was only measuring airflow uh, way way far down the system from the engine so it improves the throttle response uh, the accuracy of the fueling and the, the overall safety along with that we fitted some pressure sensors there's a um, fuel pressure here and an oil pressure down there and then there's uh, three or four other temperature sensors you can't see and some exhaust and gas temperature sensors and lambda sensors. So you're saying that these sensors, I mean obviously the sensors that come in the car aren't specifically made for, the, for an ECU that's trying to calculate a lot. I suppose from my perspective of what I'm hearing, the more information you have and the more variable everything is, you can use the technology in the ECU to adjust a lot more stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, the more info you have, the more you can do with it. So. If you are lacking a certain piece of information on where the engine is seeing load or temperature or a combination of both, you can't accurately tune it. You can't bring it close to a safe, you know, sometimes you run close to the safety margin where you don't want to go over the margin. If you've loads of extra data, you can run right up to that margin and you never go over it, so you never harm the engine. People talk about safe mapping and all this, and there's no such real thing. There's always a compromise. If you decide you want to reduce the horsepower on this, um, but you want to keep the same boost pressure, you end up winding back the ignition timing. Well, that has a massive uh, side effect, is it makes the exhaust gases really, really hot. And that makes the exhaust valves really hot, the exhaust headers really hot, but that blowing exhaust valve then heats the next fuel charge um, and it has a very detrimental effect on the next engine cycle. So this, you know, safe mapping and stuff, really you need to tune an engine to run at its optimum and safe optimum, which is the correct air fuel ratio and the correct timing, and then it will be at its safest. And that is where it will produce probably the most horsepower. Sure, you can go three or four percent leaner on the fuel if you want to be really risky to get another three or four percent power-wise, but that's not what I would be talking about now. I'm just talking about running it properly. Because so, you know, this is, uh, drift cars especially, are run at such an extreme, you know, they're on and off throttle, full throttle, yeah. off throttle. A lot of other motorsports, you'd never really come on and off throttle to that level. So I suppose having everything 100% is the most important thing and reliability is key, especially when I don't want to be blown up my engine all the time. So I'm really <laughs> happy that we have all this control yeah. within the engine bay, now feeding back to the ECU. So now I want to see the fun stuff, which is the actual ECU from Link Engine Management and oh, yeah. all the stuff that Good. controls it. Because the <clears> stuff that was in there was cool, but it was a little dated. I feel we've got a lot more toys to play with now. We want to check it out. Absolutely. Okay, Robbie, we're on the inside of the car now, which I'm really excited about because you've got a brand new digital display from Link Engine Management, which I've heard is pretty fancy and can do a lot of cool stuff that the normal car couldn't do. Oh yeah, sure. So your car had an old stack unit, which was like 80s based, which just had an analog rev counter and 
a couple of temperature displays and like one red light or something but this a full color five inch display um, it takes all the parameters from the ECU via CAN bus just basically over two wires up here in the dash um, you can press multiple different buttons to get different pages you can set up I don't know up to 20 different pages just to show you the actual data you need to see at a time because when you're driving actually competitively you really only want to see data when it's a problem that's so you want to true. see the minimum amount of data that lets you do your job properly so that you don't have to get brain overload but then if something goes wrong you want it to show you the data uh, you want to show you the warning and then show you what went wrong or is going wrong so you can make a call whether you need to stop or not so if it's water temperature it's only a couple of degrees the end of the run is in sight keep going yeah oil pressure goes to zero well if you want a blown motor you stop if you want a blown motor, you keep going, but if you stop instantly, you have a chance of a cheaper repair bill. So it gives you all those choices. It has a shift lights, but also there's a load of warning lights can be pre-configured for all the different um, pressures and temperatures and everything like that. It'll also show you if you have a fault code from the ECU. So if the ECU is seeing a sensor, given trouble, it'll put up a fault code. Um, doesn't actually tell you always exactly what that means, but it'll tell you plug in the ECU. You can okay. plug into your ECU and it'll tell you exactly what it is. So, so it this just is... tells you to check. So it's way, way more advanced than uh, you ever had before, but it's it's super intuitive because it just gives you what you need when you need it. And this means that, you know, cars, drift cars in, back in the day, gauges all on oh, the dash yeah. everywhere, yep. gauges on the pillars, and you're looking around and you're trying to figure out what's going on. This means it's one focus point in the car with all the information you need. Yeah, well, the whole idea of a, of a digital display is uh, concise information that you don't have to move your head or significantly take your eyes off what you're actually doing driving the car to check a gauge so like the Japanese used to love their gauges they used to have 10 gauges on top of the dash they'd be I used to map like a lot of historic drift cars came from Japan famous ones you couldn't even see out the car with the gauges <laughs> so true. they're a complete and utter distraction you know as well so the whole idea is it's far less distracting than gauges because as I say it just gives you the data you want when you want it so Robbie, this is the Link Thunder, which is one of the flagship models that Link Engine Management do, and you've chosen this particular ECU. Why in this car? Why this model for this car? Okay, well, really speaking, this model for this car, is, as we said earlier, this car has got quite a complex modern V8 engine because it's got four variable cams, eight injectors, eight direct coils, um, drive-by wire throttle, um, and a host of other modern features so it has a lot of data that goes into the ECU and comes out of the ECU and this Thunder ECU has the most pin count it's the big daddy in their family so it's got the most number of pins in and out and pin count in an ECU uh, is sometimes just as important as software and like the little link atom the base unit link cell uses exactly the same software and strategies as this but it just doesn't have enough pins oh, so yeah. really it, we picked this because it has the pins also this one has built-in lambda control twin lambda so it's got twin four lsu 4.9s into it and two thermocouples as well what, what's the advantages that putting a, a link in over the standard oem is going to be able to do to this particular car and its performance well one of the biggest advantages in my eyes is that you have live tuning so most oem units are flash based so you make some changes you send them to the ecu at the end off you start the engine you do some tests and then you see the results then you go back you do more changes and that process actually is very slow where with this is live tuning so literally we can put it on the dyno and as we're at a certain rpm or load range we can change the fueling change the timing immediately see the result that's a better, really better way to tune for the engine's sake as well because you the chances of being ever at a position where you got something a bit wrong or that the engine doesn't like is for a much shorter time than the other way of flash tuning I understand. And then, of course, throttle response can be... That was something that this car was a bit lazy when you came on the throttle. That's something you can change in the ECU as well? Well, yeah. The, the, the drive-by-wire response on a motorsport ECU like this is always going to be better because it tries to operate the throttle as fast as the throttle motor can actually go. OEMs often try to restrict the rate of change of the throttle motor for reliability and warranty issues and a whole lot of other things. And while you can reflash some of the data in them, they're still always going to be harking back a bit to the road car OEM warranty stuff where they try to hold the engine back for certain reasons, you know, that they've done thousands and thousands of cycles of testing and realized if they pull it back 5%, it lasts, you know, 250,000 miles. I but in racing, you're not really looking for that. You're looking for it to be reliable. Uh, if the part wears out over, you know, 50 races, it's not the end of the world to most racers. They want the speed, they want the throttle response. They want the aggression that it can get. So, you know, we wind everything to the max with the safety limit involved. Awesome. Well, 
We've checked out what's under the bonnet. We've checked out the display. We've checked out the Thunder ECU. Now let's put it all together and run this car finally working with the technology behind it and see what it can do. Okay, let's make some noise. So we fitted all of the fancy and amazing Link Engine Management software, the Dash, the Thunder ECU. Now it's time to see what all of that does to the performance of the Mobile One Mustang. I'm gonna put these on, because it's about to get loud. I could not be happier. Finally, my dream car, the Mobile One Mustang, works perfectly and better than it's ever worked before. We put in all the link engine management stuff. We got much more data back to the ECU, which is the Link ECU Thunder. You can see all of that now on its display on the dashboard. And the car made 888 horsepower. It could have made more, but the supercharger belt was actually slipping. It was moving that fast, so we couldn't get any more out of it. But that, for me, is plenty. So it goes to show, if you've got issues, if you've got gremlins, if you've got problems, if you've got an unusual car, get onto the guys at Link Engine Management, and the guys here in TDP, because this thing is now a beast, and I can't wait to strap in and see all those changes and feel them on the track for myself. Shout out to the guys in Motorsport 56. Ryan, who just put an amazing exhaust on the car, which makes it sound good, a little bit quieter for track use. And I'm pretty excited that it now makes flames. Really, really big flames. Should I tell them about the flames? Really big flames. Which probably doesn't mean anything, but it looks cool. So I'm happy with that. <laughs>